Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Google Teacher Certification Organization training session. Boy, that's a mouthful. And we, over the next 10 days, are going to learn everything that we need to know to take the Google Teacher Certification Level 1 test. This is a test designed for you to pass. Let me say it again. It is designed for you to pass. They don't want you to fail this test. They want you to pass it. Therefore, everything I share with you today and for the next 10 days is on the test. Um, if you can do what we will be doing, you will be able to pass this test. Let me walk you through uh, what the test is about. Then I want to come back. And if you wouldn't mind, you can use this flip grid that I've put in here to just drop a little blurb about who you are, where you are in your classwork, uh, whose class that you might be in, uh, that you're using this for your 15 hours. So uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a second, but let me go over what this is all about. So to understand why the Google Teacher Certification. More and more of school districts across the country are going to the the Google suite of tools in the Google Classroom. And as their storage de uh, device, they're using the Google Drive. Why is this, you might ask? Why aren't they using Microsoft? Why aren't they using AWS? That's Amazon Web Services. Simple answer, money. Um, I have a beautiful Acer Chromebook that looks every bit like my MacBook Pro. Has a backlit keyboard, has a touch screen, which my back, MacBook Pro does not have. It has speaker grills on either side of the keyboard, just my MacBook. It's actually lighter than my MacBook. It has a uh, 32 gig hard drive. Well, I checked, actually, excuse me, it's an SSD which I back up with another 64 gigs of storage that I have in a micro SIM card that I put into it. My point here is it costs one sixth of the cost of that brand new MacBook Pro. That's why our school district here in Jefferson County has over 25,000 Chromebooks in place. That's why they're going to be able, as we get through this pandemic that we're living through, kids are going to be able to receive computers to work with. The cost for a school district is microscopic compared to the cost of something like Google Enterprise Service, or Microsoft Enterprise Services. And it provides a Google Classroom that provides the structure that all teachers would love to have in their classroom managing kids work. And it's easy, it's easy. So please realize that as we go through this, you do not need to stress out and I'll show you why. So when we take the test, you have three hours to do this test. It consists of 20 multiple choice questions. And by the way, I will show you where every single question that is on the test is located. It's located here in this training session. Now, I don't think you want to sit through all 900 some odd questions, realizing that what they do is they do a random and they pull 20 for you. But I hope uh, you'll get a sense of what the questions are like so that they don't intimidate you. Then we have 11 scenarios. You are going to do the exact scenarios that are on the test as a part of this training. You'll know them forwards and backwards. And the way I've, the reason why I've broken this training down into the 10 days is that each one of the scenarios is very granular. So I wanna make sure that you understand exactly what it is that you're being asked to do. You also have a score of 80% or higher to pass. Not bad. If you do not pass it on the first attempt, and let me give you a little 
secret, I didn't pass it. And the reason why I didn't pass it is because I didn't have all this stuff like you will have. I just took it cold just to see how hard it was. And where I screwed up, and this is a warning, is the scenarios build upon each other. In other words, they get harder. And you must have a high comfort level with the use of the tools, use of the drive, use of the classroom, use of things like calendar, Gmail. If you're good on those things, you're going to be fine. Now, if you do fail it, you can take it 14 days from the day you uh, took the test to pass. The test only costs $10. That's a bargain, folks. Uh, as someone who used to be a Microsoft System Certified Engineer, I used to have to take that stupid test every year, and it was $350. If you're an A-plus certified person, meaning you can work on technology, um, again, you have to take a test every single year that's in the hundreds of dollars. So this is a this is a bargain. I haven't here. Oh, this is this is the most important thing. The Google Level One certification test is an open book test. You can have another computer sitting there beside you. You can have your phone. When you get to something you don't know, don't sit there and stress over it. Put it into the search bar. Look it up. You'll get the answer. Also, I have put in here a link to this book. Uh, it's only $9 in uh, Amazon. Again, this is the book that I'm using to prepare the scenarios for you because they're exactly right what's on the test. So if you have this book in your hands, you have another computer or your phone, something that you're comfortable with using a browser, might be a tablet, you know, it might be your iPad or it might be an Android tablet, whatever. It's all open book. So you can look things up. Uh, the last time I did this training with a group of students, they all told me that there was one thing on the test that we forgot to cover. I forgot to cover. And but they just looked it up on their phones and they had the answer. Next thing. You do not have to suffer through all of this if you don't want to. If you just want to go here to the Google Certification Training Center, and, yeah, sorry, you have to click it twice. Here you go. You can go all the way through everything you need to do, everything you need to practice, and then take the test, all from this site right here. If you're the kind of person who works best alone, if you're the kind of person who just likes to read and do, uh, I would strongly recommend you do it that way. If you're the kind of person who needs to see how things are done, it's in there. But it, it, you have to do a lot of drilling down to find things. If that is how you work, go do it that way. Now, let me come up here and let's go back and take a look at doing the flip grid. And then we'll jump in. So to do the flip grid, all you're going to do is you're going to go here and then you're going to log in with this code right here. Now, once you go to here, you make an account, you log in to the using this code and that'll allow you then to leave your little video message here for us. Love flip grids. You can use this in uh, your Google Classroom, by the way. Notice the icon right there. So let's jump in here. And it's going to ask me to sign in with my Google. And here we are. So th this is how, what our flip grid looks like. As you can see, there's that code up there that I asked you to put in. And then down here is this great big plus sign. I'm going to back up a little bit. Hello there, I'm Steve. And this is my wonderful office at home. It's actually a studio. This is a microphone right here. And we are going to be learning all about the Google Classroom over the next 10 days. I hope that if you have any questions, comments, concerns, something you 
are really worried about or I didn't cover well, you will send me a text message at 502-457-937 and say, hey, Steve, could you please let me know what I did wrong or how we did this? You'll get an answer. I promise. All right. I'm going to stop my filming. And then I'm going to go to next. And then I'm going to go to next. And then it says, if I want to take a little snapshot of myself, I can. All right. Okay. I'll slide over here. Take a little headshot. Then nah, tilt the other way. Look up at the camera, Steve. Here we go. So what it's doing now is it's putting it in. It's letting me put my name in it and all that good stuff. And then it says submit video. I'm going to do it again later on. But that's all you have to do. And if you screw it up like I just did, you can do, you can exit out. It'll say, are you sure you want to do this? And you just say, yep. All right, let's get to the heart of all this. So let's go over here. Uh, by the way, if you've never worked within a online class, let me show you how you do that. You go down here on the left-hand side, that's where it says CoLab Ultra for online Google certification training. You click on that. And it takes you into here. I cannot go much further than here because I'm already in here. But all you're going to do is you're going to click on that link and it will join the class for you. That's all you have to do. And this is our class. I will keep track of all of our recordings right here. And it already has one in here. There's our GTC introduction. Uh, I send these out as an announcement every time we record one of these. It will come to you in two video formats. This is Collab Ultra. The other video format I will send it out to you in is YouTube. Um, we find that especially if you're going to be watching this or listening to this, what a lot of my students do is they put their phone down next to them and then on the computer, they'll do the work that I'm talking about. Um, or if you just want to be able to sit and listen to it, you know, while you're doing something, that's why I give it to you in YouTube format. Uh, because frankly, the Blackboard uh, app on your cell phone isn't very good, just between you and me. Uh, and uh, we think that if we give you a YouTube version, it's easier to work with. All righty, let's go. So what do we want to do? First of all, you're going to need a Google account. If you have a Gmail account, you've got a Google account. Uh, if you need to create a Gmail account, you click through here. Now, question number one, what browser should I be using? Chrome. Uh, everything we do from here on out should be Chrome. Um, Safari, if you're on a Mac, sorry, it won't. Uh, it will work. Don't get me wrong. All this stuff works. But you're going to be required on the test to use a Chrome browser. They're gonna put you into what's called incognito mode. When we get to that part where we actually get you set up for the test, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Incognito mode, all it does is it doesn't track anything you do on the computer. In other words, it keeps you, uh, doesn't keep your history, doesn't show where you've been, doesn't keep track of any cookies. And what'll happen is, is when you start it, the Google will throw you into a sort of Chrome light or Chrome clone, um, and you will be using that to take the test. So step one, you need a Google account. As simple as that. Um, and once you get the Google account, then every time we do something, it all come, it all just works. Here's that link again that I was talking about. If you want to go in and do the Google training on your own, that link will take you there. I do not like doing PowerPoints in class, ask any of my students, but I'm gonna do a quick one, just a quickie, just so you can kind of get a feel for what we're gonna be doing. And then we'll jump into um, building a Google Classroom, looking at the link that it creates automatically for you to a Google Drive, and then we're going to do the scenario, and then we'll be done for the day. So our training is going to consist of four parts, a Google tour use, tools use, excuse me, Google classroom creation and tool integration. That's the biggie. Number two is the biggie. Uh, scenarios using tools in classroom. 
and then the fourth part will be the test. I have broken this down into three sections, and every day we will be doing another section of the test. I don't think you're going to find this uh, too hard. The reason why I'm doing this for you is I want you to understand because these things are on the test. So there's all these different Google tools. Uh, G Suite is what uh, is basically their version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint. There is no um, version of forms in the Microsoft world. There's a Microsoft uses a database program called Access, which will give you a headache if someone were to try to teach it to you. I am Access um, trained. Uh, and every time I sit down and look at an Access database, I get a headache. There isn't anything like Forms in any other place except the Google. It's a great tool. Love, love it. You'll learn it. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of looking at the G Google Drive. You are going to have to be jumping back and forth on the test between your Google Drive and your Google Classroom. So you, you've got to get comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable with tabs, you're going to need to get comfortable with them because this is how the test will do it. It'll simulate you having a classroom and using your drive. Um, the thing that makes the tools so powerful is that they are strongly, strongly uh, collaborative. You can do just about anything in a Google document where you can have kids collaborating with it. That's a big point. It's on the test. That's why I'm showing it to you. So what are docs? It's like Word. What are sheets? Like Excel. What are forms? Survey and collect information data. Nothing like it. What are slides? Presentations like PowerPoint. What are Google Drawings? Graphics and flowchart. Um, drawings is the weakest of the, of, the, of the tools, I think. But that's okay because, you know, I'm not going to use it for my heavy duty stuff. I'll use something like Pixlr. Um, and if I've had the training, I'll jump in the, you know, do Photoshop. The whole point of all this is that it saves time and increases engagement. Now, Gmail and Calendar are big, big tickets in the test. Google loves its Gmail, which you get, I mean, you know, understandable, but also loves its calendar. So a lot of what you're going to be doing is it's going to be asking you to send things to people, share things to people, to put announcements on calendar, to make uh, appointments on calendar, so on. Hangouts is their version of live video conferencing. Hangouts is the same thing as Zoom, the same thing as um, Collaborate what you're using right now. Um, it is, uh, there is a business version of the Google Hangouts called Meet. So it's nothing more than live video conferencing. Google Sites, we are learning about Google Sites because there'll be a part of the test that covers it. Google Sites is your web page creation and it's fun. And then Google Groups is here because again, it's on the test. And all Google, Google Groups is, is you can make groups of people that you can simultaneously communicate to them. Um, you know, the closest, I, well, not the closest, the exact same thing in the Microsoft world is Teams. And before we had all this amazing capability, we had distribution groups inside of email. This is the point that they will check you for on the test. And that's why I put it in here. There are two factors to consider when choosing technology for the classroom, the learning goal and the understanding of the tool. The learning goal is the most important thing. You do not start any type of technology use in your classroom until you understand how it fits with the learning goal. This is straight out of research done, something called TPAC, which I will not bore you with. But the point of this is, and the, why I'm taking the time to do this, they make a big point of it on the test, is learning goal is where you always start. Learning is paramount, text is supplemental. So kids need to understand why I'm, what am I doing? What is the purpose of this? And then they need to have knowledge of the tool. Most kids do. 
most of the kids in your, you and most of your friends do. That's what makes it so easy because you already have an understanding of what it's about. You just need to have somebody show you where the, where the switch is and the things that you click on and what it does. That's all you need to have and you'll be fine. <coughs> the power of the Google Classroom. That to me is the one thing that makes this stand out is with the Google Classroom, I can create and collect assignments. We've had programs that did this before, Edmodo jumps to mind, but it was just a turn in thing and kids hated it. Uh, I remember we had it as a trial at a high school here in Jefferson County, kids hated it. Um, not because they hated the homework part of it, they just hated the, the hoops it made you jump through. This is so simple to do. You can make a Google Doc for every kid. And the important part about it is you can differentiate the Google Doc. So if you need to have the language in that Google Doc for a kid who struggles with reading, you can do that. And the other kids in the room don't have to see that. It's very easy to do. You can also see who has completed or not completed the assignment. And you can provide, you can provide direct real-time feedback. In other words, you can be looking at stuff that kids are working on in your classroom and give them feedback. And of course you can enter the grades. I cannot stress enough, this is what's going on starting tomorrow. The NTI that will be happening in Jefferson County right now, the non-traditional instruction, is all about using Google Classroom to do these kinds of things. Teachers are being asked to upload the materials that they'll be using into their school's Google Drive. Every school has a Google Drive, and then every teacher has a Google Drive, and every kid has a Google Drive. And they're being asked to put their materials in there, and then they're putting them into their classroom drive as well. So when we look at the different tools, First one we're going to look at today is Docs. It has the ability for multiple students to edit the same document at the same time, at the same time. Cannot stress that. Create collaborative stories on a shared doc. The ability to create anything collaboratively makes it just stand up and be noticed. Um, you can allow people to see things, but not make, com make comments. Or you can let them make comments, but not make edits. So if you have these different levels of permission that you can give people, you could also reply and resolve and accept or reject suggestions from others. In other words, you can see what people are saying and give them the feedback about, no, I'm not gonna do that. I think it's better this way. Slides is PowerPoint. It's fun. <laughs> I, you know, what can I say? It's fun. Um, and it has the same ability to collaborate. And it, you, can have, you could have kids working on the entire deck or you can have one kid doing slide one, two, three, however you wanna do it. Forms, my favorite tool. Um, forms allows you to make your own quizzes. Formative assessment, as you know, it's one of the best ways to check the temperature in the room to make sure that kids are getting it. The closer we do formative assessment to instruction, the better the data is that we get back. You could build a formative assessment in Google Forms right on the spot as you're teaching, and then send kids in to do it, do a quick check to see what's going on. All of that data that it gathers goes into a Google Sheet, which is Excel. And then it makes it very simple for you to be able to look at it and see what are my trend data? Are we, are we moving forward here? Are we um, getting information? And this one is the one uh, that I really stress with my teachers. Um, that we don't use it enough, and that is for the anonymous survey. And this can take you know, a lot of different forms. Um, you probably have heard, if you've been in classrooms, and I think most of you have, you've probably heard of teachers talking about things like exit slips. Well, buddy, this is the best way you can create an exit slip. Just a simple scale where you say, okay, today we were talking about this, this, and this. On a scale of one to five, where one means what? And five means, yes, I got this. Score yourself. Give me feedback. Tell me what went well today for you. What did you learn today? Anonymous surveys, we don't use them enough. And again, it's a way of gauging the level of understanding going on in our classroom. 
And if we do it as close as possible to instruction, you get good data back. Google Sites. Google Sites is one of those things where it's it's fun um, and kids love it. Caution, it puts your stuff out there on the web. Although, as you'll see when we go to create the Google Site, you don't necessarily have to have it turned on for the whole world to see. Google Sites are a terrific way of teachers to be able to communicate and demonstrate to parents what's going on. Things to look out for in Google Sites. Be careful, be careful, be careful about kids' names, full names appearing on your Google Site. Don't want that. Um, other, and then the other powerful thing about Google Sites is it makes it very simple to embed interactive uh, content into your classroom. We'll get to all of that. Students can create visual representations, a storyline or a book using Google Drawings. Fine. <laughs> you know, as you can guess, I'm not a huge fan of Google Drawings, but it's it's serviceable. It works. And then, of course, the fact that Google owns YouTube means you have the entire YouTube world uh, available to you. Let's do a quick lesson check. See what I mean about formative assessment? So in selecting a digital tool to integrate into your class, where should you start? You always, always start with the learning objective. What, allow, what app allows you to analyze data? Sheets. Um, what people don't realize is about uh, spreadsheets is the power of the spreadsheet is to take lots and lots and lots of information and then to be able to look at it over the course of a unit of study, a semester, and then give you ideas about what's working and what's not working. I used to be in charge of a test that we would give to 25,000 kids in Jefferson County Public Schools. And my team and I would sit there and disaggregate that data. We could disaggregate it all the way down to the individual. The power of it was because we could disaggregate it all the way down to that, we could see the trend, we could see the trend lines. And we could then predict what classroom, classroom in what school was struggling. It was easy. Just look at the data. That's what sheets can do for you. And then here it goes again. If you want to create a custom logo for your blog, you could use drawings. Yay, drawings. I need to get I need to get up that my attitude back on that because it's really not that bad of a tool. All right. Now what I would like you to do for me is we are now ready to jump into this. So this is Google Teacher Level 1, Section 1. This is the stuff that we're going to cover. Not all today, but this is what we're going to cover. Uh, we will probably do this for the first week, next five days. We're going to be doing all of this that you see right here in front of you. Inside this folder, I would like you, before we get going, before you do anything, to take this survey. And I'm going to take it with you. So I'm going to go next. By the way, this is a form of a Google form. And it says, I need a name. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to put my name in, where it says your answer. And I'm going to say Steve. You don't have to give me your full name if you don't want to. And I'm going to go next. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through and I'm going to say, these are the things that I think I know how to do. If you do not know how to do it, leave it blank, please. And I'm checking all of these just to show you how to do it. But, and I do know how to do it. And then I've got this over here. Now, we're going to be covering all of this. So don't worry. If you don't know what any of this means, leave it blank. Okay, that's the point because you can come back and you can look at this again. Why am I doing this? Uh, I have a student whose name is uh, Gabrielle Jasnoff, and Gabrielle is doing her PhD work on looking at what do people bring, what do pre-service people bring to the teaching profession in terms of their technology knowledge. And so what I'm gonna do 
is if I get in something interesting here, I'm going to turn this over and let um, Gabrielle take a look at it. That's why I said don't put your full name at the beginning. Uh, just put in your first name. Okay. Betting videos into Google Forms. All this stuff is set up so easily that it's just not hard. I'm going to stop there because you don't need to see me sitting here going through all this. I have included in each one of these sections uh, tutorials that are focused. These are the latest information we have about the various tools. And I have one here for docs, one for slides, Google Sheets for beginners, Google Forms 2019. We're going to do this right now. We're going to set up a Google Classroom. But if you need to see it again before you do it, there it is. Um, if you're the kind of person who likes to have something in your hands, here you go. So this is a PDF that is the beginner's guide to building a Google Classroom, everything you need to know how to do it. Here's one more video about how to do a uh, build a Google Classroom. This is all of the Google exam icons. Here's everything that can possibly be asked as a question about the various icons on the test. And as you can see, there's quite a few. Now, how many do they ask? Not many, not many. So don't think you have to go through and, remember, and memorize all of these because you'll, you'll get them in your head after you've played with them for a little while. See, more of them. And some of these don't even exist anymore. Google Plus doesn't exist anymore. Don't worry, it doesn't show up. Okay, and that's kind of how it's going to look on the test is they'll basically say, what is this? And you can respond to it. In other words, this, this icon, what is it? And it, it's interesting how they have their own uh, language for things, which just cracks me up. All right, let's go build a classroom, shall we? Simple. You go to classroom.google. Dot com. If you are on a Chrome browser, if you are already logged in to yourself on your, in other words, your Gmail, if you've already logged into yourself on your Chrome browser, how do you know that? See up here, there's my face. That says that I'm logged in to my Chrome browser. See that right here? It says, I know who you are. You're that guy who has a Google Classroom on his Google browser. So um, you won't see it this way. What you will see is you'll be asked to click on this plus sign up here to create your first classroom. By the way, these are people who uh, have had classes with me. And this is their, this, these are their Google Classrooms. Kind of cool. So I'm going to click on that plus sign right here, and I'm now going to create a class. I'm going to say that I have understood that this is a classroom um, that I'm using with students, and I'm not using it in a classroom uh, at school. So when you get a job, and you will get a job if you want it, when you get a job, your Google Classroom will already be set up for you. Your students will already be put in there. Uh, the kind of things we have to do today with uh, putting in email addresses and everything, you don't necessarily have to do that in your classroom because it'll all be sitting there for you. What you do have to do in your classroom is the design and then, of course, putting in the materials. So I'm going to check that box and I'm going to continue. It's going to ask me to create a class. Don't worry about the section, subject, and room. Just put in a name. And I'm going to make it simple. I'm going to say Swan Google Classroom 2020. You want to be creative? Feel free. And I'm going to now click on the Create button. Takes it a second or two. Uh, remember, we're millions of these out there. So take a sip of your drink. And here we are. 
Now let me, I'm going to take you on a tour here in just a second and then we'll get down to business. If you click over here, these are the more menu. I call them pancakes. As you can see, here are all the Google classrooms that I belong to. Okay. Down here is where your settings are that are related to your Google Classroom. So if you get done with this and you want to get rid of it, I can show you how to do that. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want you getting rid of this. So this is where all that lives. Notice what's right underneath it. Google loves their calendar. And we'll be spending some quality time kicking around their calendar when we get to that part. All right, so that's classes. And as you can see, if I go out, the list shows my class first. In other words, everybody else's class, mine's first. Here we are. Let's look around what we have here. First things first, let's change the theme up. Let's give us something that looks like something that looks like you. So I can go in here and select theme and I can do it under a whole lot of different categories here. Isn't that nice of them to give you all these different looks? So you go through and find the one that you like, and you're gonna put that in as your theme. Click on it and it converts it over. Now, if you really, really, really want to make it yours, you can upload your own photo. So you can drag a photo in here and it will then become <clears throat> your theme, your banner. Um, warning, it's really particular about what it wants to see. Uh, it'll put it in there, but it, I want to show you. So if I go here and grab this, the Google Classroom JPEG, and I put it in, you see what it says? It's too small. It must be at least 800 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. So it's not going to put it in there. So you, you've got to realize that you've got to have a really, this 800 pixels is wide, folks. And then 200 pixels tall is kind of wide, or kind of tall as well. So that's what it's requiring you to do to set this up. You want to know how to do it? Yell. Actually, that's what drawings are for. You could pull it into uh, Google Drawings and you could basically set the width and the height real simply. You want to know how to do it? Yell. All right, let's go around the horn here. There's your title. I don't like this title, Steve. I, I, I want to make it something else. Click on it and you can change it. Okay. This is your stream. People get stream and classwork confused, so let me help you. So your stream is like the first thing that everybody's going to see when they land in your Google Classroom. The stream is where you want to have any announcements. If you think about uh, good teachers have things in the classroom waiting for kids when they walk in, bell ringers, and it's usually on a blackboard. Teachers who have really gotten into the classroom, the Google Classroom mindset, it's sitting in there, in their stream, waiting for kids to come in, get their Chromebooks, and sit down. There are schools, there are schools who have one-to-one -one Chromebooks in them. Um, and then there are schools that have Chromebook carts, and the carts are able to circulate around to classrooms. The goal the goal from the gentleman who is sort of in charge of instructional technology um, over at uh, JCPS is that every kid will have a Chromebook at some point in time. The Chromebooks are what is going to make, or the use of the Google Classroom is what's going to make NTI work or not work. So the stream is where you can put in the announcements for the day. You can use it as a way of introducing yourself to your students, that's the stream. This is where the work is done. This is classwork. And this is where you create the various pieces that you will then use with your students. 
As you can see down here, it says create assignments and questions. Use topics to organize classwork into mo modules or units. Boy, that's a biggie. And you can order the work any way you want it and drag things up and down. Uh, I was just on a, having a video conference yesterday with one of my students who has a really strong Google Classroom. And she and I were sitting there moaning and groaning about the fact that back here on the stream, you can't anchor an announcement in there and make it stick. In other words, always be there. Uh, so when kids log in, they'll see this one thing all the time. As you add things into the stream, it moves it down. You can move it up, but that's kind of an unnecessary step. Why should I have to do that? I should be able just to keep it up there. Classwork, the topic here is in this little mind, the way you want to go. You want to build topics and that way then when you get to organization, you have a topic that reflects whatever you're studying at the time. Um, in high school and middle school, this is easy. This is easy because they are focused on a particular part of the curriculum. And then within that particular part of the curriculum, they can break it down into whatever the curriculum units might be. In elementary school where you're teaching everything and anything, uh, unless you are assigned a specific area that you are responsible for, it gets a little tricky. And, but again, that's why topics become very important. You have a topic that represents the folder that has all the stuff in it. I think of classwork like a giant closet or a filing cabinet where you have everything that you use in your classroom. So drawer, um, top drawer of my filing cabinet might be where I have all my science stuff. That's a topic. Drawer number two might be where I keep all the math stuff. That's a topic. Drawer number three might be where I keep all my social studies. That's a topic if you're in elementary school. When you're in high school or middle school, topics look very specific to whatever it is that the kids are going to be learning. Classwork. There's that Google Calendar again. But now here's the one I really want you to look at. See where it says the class drive folder? So when your Google Drive or your Google Classroom is built, it automatically gets a Google Drive. How much storage do you have? Lots is a flippant answer, but it really is lots. It's unlimited. So. People, this is first, we're going to do a little work. The first thing I want you to do up here is you're going to click right here where it says teachers. And now you're going to type in someone's email. You're going to type in my email. Okay. And it finds me. Yay. Good. So you've just put my email into your Google Classroom. The reason why you're doing that is this is your way of being able to say, hey, I'm a part of this thing, and now you're a part of my thing. The other thing I want you to do is you're going to invite me. But more importantly, what I want you to do is I now want you to go back to that teacher section, click on that plus, and now put in the email of the instructor whose class you are in that you're using this uh, for your 15 hours. Make sure you put in that person's email here and make sure you invite them. Because when you finish doing things in our scenarios, you're gonna be able to say, click, send this out to um, Dr. Sheffield, send this out to Dr. Thomas, send this out to Robin, send this out to whoever your instructor is, they're gonna see it the work you do. You won't necessarily have to be using any of this. Uh, the scenarios will ask us to do stuff, but uh, really a great, this is the heart and soul of the thing because when you start this with kids and you put assignments in here, they're gonna be, you're gonna start seeing their grades piling up in here. The beauty of it is, and I might be speaking out of turn here, but before the pandemic hit, I knew that Jefferson County was trying to, and I think they had built it, 
they were going to build the bridge from the Google Classroom over to where the, uh, the grades are kept in the grading system in Jefferson County Public Schools. Uh, if they do that, well, your, your job's got a whole heck of a lot easier when it comes to then doing report cards and uh, semester reports and things like that. Speaking of Jefferson County Public Schools, one of the other things you need to realize is, is parents will be given access to their child's Google Classroom. Now, they don't see anything except their kids work but they will see all the other stuff that's here and here, but they won't see it. They just see it in terms of the kids work, but they do see this. Okay. Those are the tabs going across right here. This is where you can change up the name. So if you don't like that 2020 or whatever we just called it, change it there. That's your class code. You'll probably never, ever use that because someone's going to do that work for you. Uh, you can turn on that the work that you create in classwork will show up on the stream. You can either do that through a condensed notification. Hey, there's something over here. Take a look at it. Or you can put the whole shebang in there. I don't like putting the whole shebang in there because... It gets confusing because kids will suddenly then go in and, and work from the stream where you really want them to work from the classwork because in the classwork, they see everything. So I basically like doing it like that. Okay. And then show deleted items. I don't know why. Uh, every, every teacher I have worked with who has a Google Classroom, um, some of them, Turn this on because they're they're afraid to do something dumb and, and delete it. You know, for our purposes, that's probably not a bad idea because we're getting this all together. Uh, don't worry about grades because we're not going to be worrying about grades. And then you noticed up here the save popped up, so I could save that. Okay. This thing over here is called the application array, and actually is a, t a word and can be a question on the test. And when you click on it, what it does is it shows you all the various things that are available to you as Google tools. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. I caution you against using this as your way to get into the various tools that we're going to do here in just a second, like Docs. Uh, I would caution you about that. But one of the things that it does have is it does have the ability to get into Google Earth. Um, if you don't know what Google Earth Tour is, find out. If you're a social studies teacher and you don't know about Google Earth Tour or even cooler, the Google Virtual Earth Tours, you need to learn about it because it is really something. So that's called the application array. There you go. We've done a quick run around the outside of our Google Classroom. Now, let's share something. Who are we going to share it with? Well, if we share it with all students, it will go to the persons that you have put in here. So I'm just going to say hi and welcome to my classroom. And now comes the fun part. Down here, you see this will always be the same in everything that you do inside of the Google Classroom. There's always this little add thing. And if you click on it, it allows you to bring things in from your Google Drive. You can bring it in from a link. You can bring in a file. You can bring in a YouTube video. And so if you're doing something that where you're setting stages for people, you can do it right here. You get to bring in that document that you're going to be looking at today in class. You could bring in a link to that document that you're going to be using that day in class. You could bring in a YouTube video that says today we're going to be learning about this or that or the other. Okay. I'm going to post it. I could schedule it, but right now I want to post it. And I just did. 
Now, do you see what I'm talking about? Where teachers, this drives them crazy. The fact that I can't do anything about my stream. So as we add things to my stream, it's going to push this original post down and down. And <laughs> uh, it drives folks crazy. It drives me crazy, too. Notice below it is the capability of someone to give you a comment back. Thank you for welcoming into your classroom. Um, you know, if you send this to me, you're going to get a comment back. Now, let's go and do scenario one. So let me come over here and I'm going to open up this link. And I'm going to be looking at my scenario here. Pretty straightforward. Not too hard. And then we'll do those questions there as our exit slip. So this is exactly the way it looks on the test. To prepare for the Google Certified Educator Level Exam, you need to practice using the tools. Navigate to Drive, Google, and do the following. In your Google Classroom, under Classwork, your Drive folder is already created for you. You click on it, and boom, there you land. What's nice about it is, Nothing's here because it's from your classroom. And what I try to get people to get into the habit of doing is to have both of these tabs open at all times. The scenario says for us that it wants us to create a folder here called exam materials. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to click on the plus because that's where everything starts from. And I'm going to come down, and the first thing that's there is a folder. And it wants us to call it exam materials. Boom. So now I have a folder in here called exam materials. It says to share it. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to share it by clicking on the little head up here with the plus sign. And we can do it with more than one person. So just for um, consistency, because we're sharing the classroom, you've invited in your uh, instructor, go ahead and put their email in here. So I'm going to put in mine again. It recognizes me. I'm also going to add more people because the scenario says to put in, uh, share the exam folder with this guy right here. Jeeve Cleave 1, oh, Cleve, Cleve, Clevel 1, ADM. Boy, you know, they could have come up with an easier name, you know? Jeeve. Cleve L. What was the rest of it? AD? ADM. Oh, I guess that means he's an administrator. ADM at gmail.com. Okay. Got it? Send. It says, do you want to add more people? Nope. I don't want to add anybody. Do I want them to organize? No, I only want them to view it. Thank you very much. Don't let that, make sure you do that. Okay, they'll catch you on that. So all you're doing is you're sharing the exam materials folder with this person, GCE. Did I get that right? And I'm going to share it. Yeah, don't let that throw you. Because the reason why it's doing it is because we're not in the test. When you're in the test, it sets up this fake setup. That's why I'm asking you to put in your instructor's name, email in there. All righty. The next step it asks us to do on the test is 
Practice makes perfect and you need more practice. Within the exam materials folder, create the following files. You're gonna make a Google Docs, you're gonna title it Google Foo and You, how exciting. You're gonna make a Google Slide presentation, you're gonna call it Once Upon a Google. You're gonna create a Google Sheet, you're gonna call it Google These Numbers. Alrighty, so I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna open up my T exam materials. I'm gonna go back up here to that plus sign again and I'm gonna open a Google Doc. Did you see what that said? I went through that too fast. It said that anything you now put in here is gonna be shared out, or anything you do in here is gonna be shared out with the people that you have shared that folder with. The first thing you do, this is on the test. The first thing you do when you create anything in the Google, is you put in a title up here. So they wanted to title this Google Foo and You. I don't make this stuff up, folks. Here we go. Google Foo and You. Thank you very much. And now I can just click off on it and I've made it. Okay. And I can go over here back to my drive and there it is. I'm going to go here. It wants me to make a Google Slides presentation. It's created in a shared folder. The creation, the created item will have the same sharing permissions as the selected folder. That's fine. And now look up here. There's where you're going to put in that title. And that one is called Once Upon a Google. So now I'm going to go up here. I'm going to close that tab out. Once upon a Google. Okay, return. Go back to my drive. There it is. Go over here to new. And now I'm going to create a Google Sheets. Same message. And let's see, we're calling this Google These Numbers. <laughs> Love these titles. Google These Numbers. Yay. Okay. There we go. So let's go ahead and close these. And let's look in our file. There we go. Look at that. So I have three files that I have created. I have a doc, and that's the icon for it. I have a sheets, again, the icon for it, and I have a slides. Content, let's see what else we have to do. The best way to learn to do, or something like that, add the following content to a few of the documents you've created. So with, within Google Doc, title Google Foo and You, insert the following text. If I can Google, anybody can. Seriously, anyone. It's, by the way, it's anyone can. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll put that in. If I can Google, anyone can. All right. So I'm going to go back to my exam materials. I'm going to open up my Google Foo and You. If I can Google, anyone can. Okay. And let's see, was there a second one? Sure. Seriously, anyone. <laughs> okay. By the way, when you take the test and they have these kind of questions, I can't, I cannot grab any of this because it's a PDF. But on the test, you can literally go highlight this. Take it over to here and paste it in, just to let you know. Steve, where's the save? It automatically saves. Every time that you do something on this page, it automatically is saving that page. Okay. Next thing, it wants us to create a slideshow. 
once upon a Google, create two slides, give each slide the following title, insert a text box. How exciting. All right, so we'll go back. Let's close out my Google. And now I'm going to go to my once upon a Google. And again, I think you know these things. If you've ever worked inside of uh, PowerPoint, it all works the same way. Google 101. How many did you say to make? Oh, Google Slides 101. Ooh. Sorry. Google Slides 101. It said to make two slides with the same thing in them. How do you do that, folks? You come over here, you right click on it, and you duplicate it. There you go, Googly. I've now made two slides that say 101 on them. Not hard. Okay, this one takes a little bit of time, and I wish I could get into these cells. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. So we're doing name, exam one, exam two, average. So in row one, that's what we're going to put across. Name, exam one, two, and average. I'll go ahead and close out my slides. I don't need it right now. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And name, use your arrow, key, arrow keys, people. When you're working your way through a spreadsheet, it's the easiest way to do it. And it keeps you from accidentally clicking in the wrong places. Okay. And now once it's put in some data, let's see, we got Bill, Susan, Sam. Bill, Susan, Sam. Now, remember what I said, use your arrow keys. If you use uh, your enter key, your return key here, it's not the end of the world. But when you do that inside of a spreadsheet, it's basically assuming that you're telling it to do something. You know, do a function, add, do an average. Let's, let's see the average out there. That's coming toward the end of the week. So let's see. We've got 98, 78, 99. 98, 78. 99. Ooh, two. 98, 78, 99. Already you're seeing something, aren't you? Okay, let's go to exam two. We had 96, 87, 82. Interesting. And it doesn't want us to do anything with the average yet. Okay. So there we are. Not hard, is it? Once again, just to show you, everything that we have created is sitting right there inside of that file folder. And we have shared that file folder, hopefully with your instructor, and they're now getting the information about what we just did. Cool, huh? Now, for today, because the, we're done with the scenario, by the way. See how easy they are? We're going to go up here, and we're going to get a link, and we're going to turn it on. So make sure you turn on your link. So anyone with the link can view. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to grab this link. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what, where that came from. I'm going to grab this link and I'm going to put that link into the assignment in here and let me go to that so as you can see scenario one assignment and I'm going to go all the way down and make sure that I've seen everything we're gonna do that in just a second I'm gonna click on the scenario one link and I'm going to go and I'm going to 
put in here any comments that I want to put in I can but what I really want to do is I want to do a write submission and when I get that little spot right there I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to submit that what that does is that now shows that you came you participated and then you shared the work you did in scenario one assignment. Make sure we get all that. I think I did that a little fast, so I wanna make sure you get it. So basically, I went back, this is, this is the home of the assignment for today. What we did today was we went into our drive, we created a folder called exam materials, and we put these three, th three things in that folder. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to allow people to see that. And so we, we copied it and we put that link in there to share with people. I went up here to where the little head is turned. That means it's turned on. Um, before it gets turned on, you have to click up here where that link was, remember? And then I get the shareable link, bam. Anybody who can, anybody with this link can view it. And I've copied the link. And now I can go back into my scenario one. Click on the link for scenario one. Scroll down to where it tells you you can write submission right here. And then once I get to that, I can click below it and paste it in. Do not worry about the fact that it does not come in as a link. Um, I mean, if you want to get really, if you really want to do it right, you can highlight what you put in here, go to the little chain icon, copy in the same link and insert it. You see what it says? Yes, we're going to open in a note with that. Thank you very much. And so now we have the ability that it is now in here. Okay, I created a note. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome, Siri. Siri just created a note for me. And I'm going to submit that. And I'm not going to see it because I'm the owner of all this, and it, I only get to play with it. When you submit it, it'll come in as blue underlined and all that. And if I click on it, it'll take me to where you did your work. That's it for today. Tomorrow, we'll take a deeper dive back into uh, docs. We'll swim around inside of docs for a while. Uh, and we're gonna make sure you understand what goes on inside of docs. And then we'll do the quick down and dirty scenario for docs. Let's see how you're doing with your understanding real fast. Here's some sample questions right off of the test. What is Google Drive? The answer is C, a document creation and storage platform that works within a web browser. You need to click save to save your work using docs, sheets, and slides. That's false. As soon as you open a doc or a sheet or a slides, what do you do first? You name it. And as soon as you do that, you have saved it. Don't go in there and just start working. Name it. Um, this one's kind of, I don't know. This is, this is the kind of question they throw at you in there. You kind of go, what? And I'll go over this tomorrow so you can see it. But it is cool. What is the best way to convert Microsoft files to Google Drive files? Just upload. Just upload them into your Google Drive. What is the advantage to using Google Docs and Drive in the classroom? Easy collaboration with students and teachers, cloud storage, so documents can be accessed anywhere, uh, saves paper, all of the above. The answer is all of the above. They do a lot of those on the test, so just be ready for them. What's the easiest way to share a Google Drive document? You already did that. Use the share feature in Drive. Simple as that. 
Using Google Drive, the sharing settings are the same in Doc Sheets and Slides. Absolutely true. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of the Google is it's so simple. The problem for those of us who create things for online is the problem for us is it's so simple. I can't do very much with it in terms of how I might want to change it up. And that's okay. When we get into building with topics and all that, you'll see how you can really get it to the point where um, if you're the kind of person who is very linear, uh, if you're the kind of person who likes to have things organized, you're going to love this. I'm not going to do these next questions because that'll be tomorrow. But boy, is this cool. Look at this. In Docs, using the research tool, you can cite a web source. Isn't this a wonderful that we can finally have a way to show kids and ingraining kids to cite your source? And it's so easy to do. And I'll show you how to do that. Can you export a Google Doc as a PDF? Absolutely. In fact, for half the stuff that you're seeing here, these were all exported as PDFs to be able to put in here. Well, that's it for today. We ran on for about an hour, which is what I expected. We will meet back here tomorrow at 1 p.m., uh, where we'll take up going into a deeper dive into Google Docs. We will then explore how to use uh, Google Docs in our teaching. And then we will do scenario number two. Uh, scenario number two tomorrow is a very short one. Uh, it basically is asking us uh, to play around with the ability to do commenting and sharing of stuff, um, and also how to use the Explorer tool and how to use the research tool. Excellent, excellent stuff to know, uh, especially if you want kids to really use their Google Docs to do the kind of uh, work that it's capable of doing. We finally have a way to help kids understand what citation and first primary source and all that is about. It's a powerful, powerful tool. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you may text me at 502-457-2937. And just as a reminder, this is not mandatory, but if you'll jump in here and throw in your Flipgrid video so that we can all see what each of us looks like and say hello, uh, especially in this time of social distancing, it's kind of nice to know who you're doing this with. 1 p.m. tomorrow, I'll see you. You do not have to be here at these 1 p.m. times. I'll have this video uh, done here in about oh, another hour. It will be sent to you as an announcement. It will also be kept over here in the GTC Colab recordings for you to find. See you tomorrow.